get out Do of you this. think they're doing the same thing with Jim Carrey now that they did with you 30 years ago? Try to ridicule him and call him crazy and say all the bad shit towards him because he's kind of had a spiritual awakening. He wants to stay away from the media and do he's in the woods and just try to heal himself and get away from the false shit that was involved in for so long. Well, I, I, I spent an evening with Jim Carrey actually at his home. Um, with my son Jamie uh, some years ago when I was in LA uh, and we had a very interesting chat um, and again J Jim Carrey's had a an experience similar to me where where basically the bubble popped and the veil lifted and um, it can be a challenging time because suddenly you're, you're perceiving another reality that's so different to the one you've been perceiving before and of course when you start talking about it for reasons we've discussed, you're going to get ridiculed for, by the mainstream. Um, the trick is not to care. And from what I've seen of Jim, he don't care. And, you know, you know, people just thought, uh, look at, look at this, the range of things you perceive. Is that really the limit of what there is to perceive? Is that really the limit of what there is to know? Is that the limit of ways of seeing the subjects you have views about? Well, of course not. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction. Anybody's views are a tiny fraction of possibility. So why aren't we exploring all possibility? Not that you, you, you come across information and just because you come across it, oh, that's true, then I'll believe that now. No, you question it, you... you process it you come to conclusions about it but it's it's very simple and history shows us this systematically reducing the amount of information views and diversity of information and views available to people never ends up well okay. it never turns out good it always turns out bad for humanity because you look at any tyranny fascist tyranny communist tyranny whatever it is whenever they get power they want to de destroy all alternative information and view that challenges what they want people to believe every time so whenever you're in a situation where the free flow of information and view and opinion is being censored you are in a tyranny and what humanity has allowed itself not everybody of course but great numbers especially the political correctness group is is they've allowed themselves to become a tyranny while claiming to be anti-tyranny i see anti-fascist protests full of people acting fascistically because they're so far up their own ass and so full <laughs> of their own um, self-purity they don't realize that what they're doing is actually projecting their own behavior um, in in what they're um, opposing anyone who gives someone a hard time for having a different view however much they may not agree with it is a psychological fascist in my view because they are seeking to um, impose their will on someone else and uh, it's uh, quite simple. You let all information be circulated and then people make their own minds up what they want to believe and what they don't believe. And this is a key. Um, what we're seeing now, not least through algorithms uh, and, and through self-censorship by being intimidated into, into being terrified of speaking your truth, we're seeing information censored before the point of delivery, before anyone can hear it. This is fundamental because I, I believe that all information and all views should be allowed to be expressed uh, because if anyone is censored from expressing those beliefs, then no one has freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is freedom of speech, the freedom to speak. It's not freedom to speak what is acceptable, it's the freedom to speak. And once anyone is censored, freedom of speech is dead. Because what's left 
is only what is acceptable to speak. And that's not freedom of speech. And then what they've done and what they're doing all the time is squeezing that acceptability. So freedom of speech gets narrower and narrower until it disappears altogether. And so what we have um, is uh, a situation where if people are allowed to say and communicate whatever they want, that is a situation where no authority in any form has the power to decide what people see and hear. Once you start censoring before the point of delivery, which is to say algorithms and self-censorship is now doing, you are giving authority the power to decide what people see and hear. And of course, it starts out with one excuse. We must stop jihadis, um, you know, justifying or promoting violence. Okay. Oh, fake news. Fake news. What's fake news? Whatever we say it is. Uh, yeah, we've got to stop people saying fake news. So we're going to censor that. Oh, um, the more people we can get to be uh, victims and upset, the more excuses we've got to censor even more, right? Yeah. So give people all the excuses they want to be upset and to be, feel a victim. And then we can censor people saying things that upset them. And so you're moving along this road. None of that can happen when we have the free flow of information, nothing censored. So people say, well, what about, you know, saying go and kill people? Yeah, but there's laws against that. There's laws against that. There's laws against telling people, oh, burn that house down. But they're after the point of delivery, which means you can deal with um, the extremes of what how people use speech, but it's, it's heard. Mm -hmm then you can deal with it if it needs dealing with it. And most speech does not need dealing with it at all. You know, come on, let's go and kill this person. Well, obviously, um, you know, you deal with that. You have to deal with that. But it's after the point of delivery. And as long as we hold that line, authority has no power to censor. What we're seeing now is the opposite of that. That beyond, before that line is, is, is where most censorship is starting to happen. And thus freedom is disappearing. Well, 